God, we thank you. We bless your name, oh God, simply because of who you are. Oh God. We know you as Jehovah Child, our provider. We know you as Jehovah Shammah, always present. Oh God, we know you as Jehovah Nisi. You are our banner, oh God. We know you, Lord God, as El Shaddai, El Ohim, El Olam, El Elyon, oh God. You are the most high God. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, oh God. There is nobody like you, Lord God. We could search all over and we could never find anybody that comes close to you, oh God. Lord God, we know your God is the Alpha and Omega of us, oh God. You knew our beginning and you know our end, oh God. And Father, we lift your name on high tonight, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for every praise dancer, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for every decree, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your presence is manifesting itself in this place, oh God. Now, Father, speak a word. Speak a word from on high, Lord God. Forgive me of all of my sins, oh God. Forgive me of all of my doubts, oh God. Forgive me of all of my shortcomings, oh God. Oh God, speak to me, oh God, so that you can be glorified. The saints would be edified. Some sinner might be sanctified. And the devil would be horrified. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. John chapter 7, you, starting at verse 37. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. Right. Yes, and it reads, in the last day, ha. that great day yes. of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, yes. saying, if any Amen. man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. For just a few moments, I want to talk about how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? You may be seated. How bad do you want it? Apostle, how bad do you want it? Apostle, how bad do you want it? Minister, how bad do you want it? Prophetess, how bad do you want it? People of God, how bad do you want it? According to the Austin Water Utility Reports, the Austin area is in an extreme drought. A drought is a season of extreme dryness, scarcity, lack, dearth or an adequate supply, insufficiency, and it could possibly lead to a famine. All right. The drought we are in is so serious that we are at the point where we must conserve water. That's right. 
Uh, there are five water conservation stages. There is a stage where there is no water conservation. That's right. Then you have water conservation stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. Stage four is the worst and most dire stage. Right. right now, Austin is at the cusp That's of right. stage three. Right. We are at the cusp of stage three because our water sources are running low yeah. and our backup water sources are close to empty. Mm. Austin's source for drinking water is the Colorado River mm. and more specifically the Highland Lake system, including Lake Austin. Give me a minute, I'm gonna take you somewhere. I know, I know. However, the water Austin uses is replaced by water flowing through and from our region supply reservoirs, Lake Buchanan and Lake Travis. Mm -hmm. Right now, both lakes are in dangerously low levels. Lake Buchanan is at 35% capacity, mm -hmm. and Lake Travis is at 34% capacity. Mm -hmm. You can tell that we are in a drought not just because lake levels are low, uh, right. but because even the weathermen get excited when they can announce that rain is on the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can tell that we are in a drought based on the increase of our water bills. Uh, <laughs> right. Don't believe it, check the fine print on your electricity bill. Mm. Uh, you can tell we are in a drought because we now have water restrictions in our area. Yeah. If you have an even address number, uh, you, you can only run water on the outside of your home or use your sprinkler on Sundays. Right. If you have an odd number address, you can only run water outside your house or use your sprinkler system on Saturdays. Yeah. And you can only do it during the hours before 10 a.m. and after 7 p.m. Yeah. which right now is the coldest and darkest times of the day. Yeah. Which means you can't water your plants, you can't water your grass, you can't yeah. wash your car, you can't even give your pets water from your outside water holes unless it's during those hours. All right. These are not recommendations, these are requirements. Yeah. Uh, there are water conservation trips and, trips and tips out there including taking shorter showers, not filling your bathtub up past a few inches, don't run your faucet longer than you have to, don't run your dishwasher unless it's a full load, only wash when it's necessary, check for leaks, Y'all will get that later. And so many other things. I, I, I saw a sign just yesterday for a class on how to learn how to properly catch rainwater in buckets. Right. Yes, we are in a drought in the natural. Yeah. But some of us are in a spiritual drought yeah. as well. Uh, uh, you know how you can tell that we're in a spiritual drought? Well, come on. By the lack of healings. All right. All right. Come on By the lack of miracles. Yeah. By the lack of signs and wonders. All right. By the lack of manifestation. Yeah. By the lack of financial health. Yeah. And by the lack of spiritual prosperity. Yeah. Jesus said, if you believe in me, the work that I do, you shall do also and yes. greater works yeah, yeah. 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 that these shall do. Yeah. Uh -huh. So how is it that we are anointed to do greater works, but we can't even heal nobody? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Letting the devil do whatever 
he want to do. Yeah. He's yeah. just walking, right. seeking, and devouring because we sitting up here walking around in lack. We're walking around in our personal pity drafts. Just dry. Just dry. Empty. Empty. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. Dead men and dead women walking. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Don't tell the truth. We got a whole lot of arid Christians. That's Come it. Come on. There should be time restrictions on you. That's right. Right. Some of us should come with warning labels that say only spend time with me during the hours of. A mean Christian. Okay. How are you saved and mean? Come on. How do you say you love Jesus and you hate the folks he created? Come on. Come on. Just dry. Walking, talking, breathing deserts. Oh, yeah, I, I see y'all. Y'all looking at me kind of strange. You mad now? Y'all are looking at me a little crazy. Uh oh, do not get mad at me. Uh, I'm just the messenger. Who you're really mad at is God because he told me your business. I'm just the paper boy. He owns the articles, he owns the news company, and he owns the print press. Quiet, y'all looking at me. And I know, I know you want me to get to the best part of the sermon. You want me to get to out of your belly. But can nothing come out of an empty belly? This is a divine setup. You are getting delivered tonight. Because if you get delivered, you can prophesy your own breakthrough. You can prophesy your own healing. You can prophesy your own miracle. You can prophesy your own job. You can prophesy your own promotion. You can prophesy your own husband. Healing. How bad do you need to 
that we can deliver. Yes. Uh, Y'all are quiet up in here. The moment I started talking about sin, you got quiet. Because ain't nobody mad but the devil. So if you're mad, maybe you just might be. Ask your neighbor, are you mad? Not only uh, are some of us in a spiritual drought, but some of our churches are in spiritual drought. Be seated if you can. Be seated if you can. Y'all are making me nervous. My, my church ain't this loud. I appreciate it. Uh, some of our churches are in droughts, in spiritual droughts. And to be honest, some of our churches are in spiritual famine. Yes, it is. It amazes me how people can get up early on a Sunday morning, Well, put on their best Sunday clothes, fight the kids to get ready for church, get in an argument with their spouse on the way to church, fight all kind of demons and spirits on the way. Yeah. Fight traffic, fight people's bad attitudes, oh, wow. pay off speeding tickets, oh, wow. barely get to church on time, and then you get there and you just sit. A few months ago, I preached uh, in my church a sermon entitled The Last Five Words of a Dying Church. Oh, uh, the last five words of a dying church is it don't take all that. Yeah. 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 They don't take all that. Yeah. You ain't never heard them words you praise and then your praise on and somebody say, it don't take all that. You want to do a prayer service in the unusual hour and it don't take all that. Uh, uh, they want to accept women preachers. It, it, it don't take all that. But baby, I don't know about you. Come on. But for me, it takes all of that and then some. You can sit there on the, as a bubble of lock if you want to, but it takes all of that and then some. It takes all of that for me because you were not there when God saved me. You were not there when God delivered me. You were not there when He paid my bills and I had no job. You were not there. Sit down if you can. Our text today. Our text today. I'm gonna go real fast, so you gotta watch me. Our text today takes place during the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, there are seven Jewish feasts or celebrations, rather, in the year uh, uh, for the Jewish people. The Feast of Tabernacles is the very last and most celebrated feast of the year. The Feast of Tabernacles is like the climax of the Jewish calendar. Uh, 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 the Feast of Tabernacles to the Jews is what New Year's is to us. Uh, the closing of a, of a year and uh, the beginning of a new year. Uh, it's a grand celebration. And all the Jews get to go. All the Jews, they travel far and wide just to go celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. All right. But there was one Jew that didn't want to go. All right. His name is Jesus. Mm. In this passage, the Savior does not want to go celebrate. All right. Uh, does anybody want to know why he don't want to celebrate? Mm. He doesn't want to go uh, because he don't feel like celebrating. After all, at this particular time, a lot had happened. 
Uh, it appears that his moment and his movement is falling apart. All right. Many of his disciples have left him at this yes. point. Yes. Uh, his betrayal is in view. Yes. His denial is around the corner. Yes. He has to lay low in Galilee because there are death threats in Judea. Yes. Uh, his own brothers say they don't believe in who he is. Yes. He admits and says out loud that the world hates him. He says, I'm not going because it's just not my time. All right. Uh, but something happens. Something happens along the way in the mind of our Savior. And although his disciples go on before him, and I really wish I had time to really break down why, if Jesus don't go, you shouldn't go. No. But the disciples went right. without him, and, and he decides to go later in secret. The Bible says that he goes anyway. Yeah. He knows that his haters are in Judea, mm -hmm. but he goes anyway. Yeah. Uh, he knows that the people that are trying to kill him yeah. are there waiting for him, oh. but he goes anyway. anyway. Yes. And when he gets there, he does not hide. Mm. He preaches in the temple. Yeah. If I was Jesus mm. and I decided to go where people wanted to kill me, I surely wouldn't be in the temple. Mm -hmm. I'd be somewhere hiding out. Yeah. Uh, he preaches in the temple, and the Pharisees can talk and try to get to him, All right. but they just can't. Huh? They're trying to kill him, but uh, they can't get to him. All right. They couldn't get to him because it wasn't his time, yeah. but it was his turn. Yeah. Y'all just get that on me. Yeah. Yeah. And some of your enemies, no matter how hard they try, uh -huh. they cannot get to you because although it's not your time yet, yes. it is your turn. Yes. That's good. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Jesus is now at the feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, and, and it's also say, associated with the fall harvest. Theologians have said that it's a grand feast. It was a sight to behold. If you want to see a party done right, you should have attended the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, they're celebrating because it's harvest time. Somebody say harvest time. Uh -huh. harvest time. And during this feast, during this celebration, there are several rituals, so many rituals. There's uh, the decorating of sukkah, and, and there's all kind of stuff. And I don't want to really go into all that, but for a brief moment, I want to talk about one particular ritual, mm -hmm. the libation of the water. Yeah. All right. yeah. The libation of the water yeah. was a ceremony, a tradition, yeah. a, a ritual that was extremely important for the Jews. Yeah. Now mind if I teach for just five more minutes. Come on. It is regarded as a symbol mm -hmm. for the rain. All right. Wow. Without rain, there can be no harvest. That's That's right. Right. Without rain, mm -hmm. there would be drought, lack, mm -hmm. and famine. Yes. As a matter of fact, a prayer for rain was recited on the eighth day mm -hmm. of the feast. That's yes. right. That's right. Uh, on the last day of the feast, it, feast, it is said that uh, a golden pitcher was filled up with water by the priest mm -hmm. from the pool of Siloam. Mm -hmm. uh, later in John, Jesus heals a blind man, tells him to go to this same pool, and he receives sight. Mm -hmm. So this healing water is in this pitcher. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the priest then carries the pitcher mm -hmm. uh, while the multitude and the people are reciting scriptures. Yeah. All right. He's carrying the pitcher of yes. water, they're reciting scriptures, and also there are trumpet blasts. Yeah. Meaning there's high worship yes. and there's high praise. Yes. But during the pinnacle of this ritual, well, come on. during the pinnacle of this tradition, yeah. uh, the priest starts to pour and sprinkle the water among the worshipers. Yeah. And, and everyone wants a little bit of this water. Yeah. All right. Everybody wants a little bit of this rain. Yeah. They really traveled all this way just to get a little rain of water, yeah. uh, just to get a little sprinkle of water. Yeah. They yeah. traveled just to get a prophecy. They yeah. traveled just to get a word. Yeah. They traveled just to get some hands laid on them yeah. by the bishop. They, they traveled all the way to the potter's house just so maybe Bishop James can look at them. Yeah. And so uh, the priest is about to sprinkle the water. Yeah. Yeah. And right Quiet like that. He hollers and says, If any man thirsts, 
What he's basically saying is that although you come to get something from the preacher, what you really need is in me. Come here. 
Who worked on the conference with Prophetess Davis? Who worked on the conference? Come up here, come up here. If you worked on it, if you are the MC, if you did the welcome, I know she didn't do it by herself. Come on, time is of essence. Come on, come on. Jesus. 